Hello everyone, it's Ben from NLFX and I'm here to answer one of your questions. Uh, many of you have asked me, why in the world do I get more bass off the back of my speaker than I do off the front? What kind of moron designs a loudspeaker that has more bass going where you don't need it than goes out into the audience and the people who are paying us to provide sound? So, we're going to take a look and see just exactly what's going on and why so many of you have asked me that question. Why do I get more bass on the back and no bass on the front? So let's take a look here. What I've got is I've got two different loudspeakers we're gonna take a look at. We're gonna see if there's some differences here. We've got a column array speaker, and then I've got a typical point source system. So a 12 inch top over a 15 inch sub. And I've got two measurement mics, both equidistant from the loudspeakers, both six feet away. This one in front, that one in back, and both of these are calibrated, so they're perfectly matched right now. So we should get really accurate data uh, at least considering, you know, what we can in our little quick science fair here. And we're in a pretty typical wedding venue ballroom. So obviously we're not in an anechoic environment. Uh, we're in a real world environment. One more thing I want to note is I have brought these speakers out away from the wall to avoid any coupling and things from the wall. Uh, sort of a fun thing to note is that if you're eight feet away from a wall uh, and you've got that base going back to the wall and then coming back out, that's 16 feet, which I think works out to somewhere around 70 hertz. So obviously we wouldn't want cancellation there. So that's why they're placed so far away from the wall. We want to get accurate measurements to see what's going on here. Uh, and so with that in mind, let's take a look. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I've got the smart measurement software on this computer. And I'm using this mixing board as both a uh, input and output device for smart. And everything is zeroed out. And again, those microphones are calibrated. So what we're going to do is we're going to send pink noise which is equal energy at all frequencies. And we will then uh, have a really good representation of what's happening. Uh, if we got all that energy back as we sent it, we would see a flat line on the RTA, but we're gonna see uh, what happens with our bass and why, why we uh, you know, feel like we've got more coming from behind the speaker than we do in the front. So let's take a look. Okay, let's go ahead and play some pink noise. Uh, and you can see already that the RTA is just picking up the sound of my voice and a little bit of uh, some sounds from the building. Uh, we'll see a dramatic change here when I turn the uh, pink noise on. And you'll notice that I have two microphones, my front and my rear. So my front microphone is going to measure uh, yellow and my rear microphone is gonna be uh, displayed in blue. Well, let's take a peek. What we're playing right now is we're playing the point source system. So we're playing the 12 inch top over the 15 inch sub. And what we can see is that, in fact, there actually is not more bass behind the speaker. There's actually more bass in front. But what we see is a very rapid reduction in the high frequency. I'm going to do that again and we're going to freeze these shots here. But what I want to point out is that in order to direct sound, we either need physical boundaries like a horn, or we need uh, you know, a wall or something like that, or we need multiple drivers. And in this case, that, fingal, that's that single 15 inch sub uh, is producing a largely radial pattern. So that low frequency is going behind it and in front of it. And a little bit more of it's coming out the front than the back, but pretty much it's going in all directions. However, when you step out in front, you also hear the high frequency, which is not going behind, and that's because of that horn. That physical boundary on the high frequency is directing that forward. So it sounds like there's more bass behind the speaker, but in reality, there isn't. Let's take a look again. So here we can see now our re uh, rear measurement is shown in pink, and I've just kind of frozen that and our front measurement is shown in blue. Uh, and of a fun little note here, uh, probably why we see this little dip is uh, some, uh, probably some phase interference from that microphone being where it's at and the building. So just a fun little nugget there, maybe a future video on that. But here again, we can see on the rear mic, we have a very rapid reduction in the high frequency, which allows us to only hear low frequencies behind the speaker. But in front, of course, we have uh, all of the uh, frequencies largely being produced equally. So let's take a look at the column array and see how it differs. Okay, so now we see the column array and largely we see the same thing. That low frequency is uh, fairly prevalent both in front and behind, but our high frequencies drop off very quickly. 
And so we see the same thing. In fact, there is not more bass behind the speaker than in front. There is more bass in front, but we also hear the high frequencies, so we don't uh, hear as much of that bass. Okay, so here we see the captured shots from the column array, and just like before, uh, we see the rear measurement in this green color, and we see the front measurement in the red color. Again, there actually is more bass coming out the front, uh, but it's very close to what's coming out the rear. The biggest difference is we just don't hear the high frequencies coming out the rear. So, there you have it. Short answer, the designers did a pretty good job. Uh, there isn't uh, wasted acoustic energy coming out the rear. Uh, most of the sound energy does, in fact, go towards the people. So, there you go. In conclusion, what we saw is there is, in fact, more bass coming out the front of the speaker than the rear, but it's very similar. Uh, it's very difficult to directionalize low frequency without using large boundaries or uh, more drivers. Of course, you can use cardioid setups. I've got a video on that. Feel free to watch it. Uh, but what we see is the designers did, in fact, do a pretty good job of getting the acoustic energy out to the people that are paying us. So you don't have more bass behind your speaker. It's, it's all in your head. Anyway, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe. More videos coming soon and keep those questions coming. Thanks.